Afternoon, going to be looking at landscape, perspective, a bit of dry brushing, wind turbines, okay? Unusual structures in the landscape. I have an absolute fan out there that I know is desperate to do one of these and it's relevant and this tone, so enjoy. Right, so we've got uh, a wind turbine, wind turbines, as you know, generate power. There's an absolutely perfect model of one there. Okay, I'll leave that there. And did you know, wind turbines have fan clubs. They absolutely do because people can get them printed on pillowcases. Okay, so don't want to hear anybody telling me that unusual structures and mechanical structures of beauty actually don't want to be painted because they do. So if we look at this uh, wind turbine, you can actually see as I hold it, there is a dark side, as in Star Wars, dark side, no. Dark side and a light side on that stem. And you have a similar thing happening to the blades as well. If I turn them very slightly, you might be able to get that. Okay, now if I was to uh, simplify the example here and use a tube of paper, you can see that effect very nicely on that piece of paper. And the only way that that lighting will be changed is if the source of light was somewhere else on it. Okay, so at the moment, the shadow is very much on this side. Now, if we look at the picture, I'll put that little contraption away. Look at this picture, there's a definite shadow on this side of that stem. And that's going to be really important in making um, your version of it looking 3D. Okay, and you get elements of it on those blades. The other thing I want to highlight before I do a time lapse and get you started is... If I use my pencil and I work out using my thumb there, the length of that blade, if I then angle it across to the stem, it comes to about here, which means that there's two blades to each stem on your wind turbine. So that's quite important because then you'll get it in proportion. Okay, so if I build upon the perspective we did from a, another little demonstration, we've got a very dominant straight line there. Okay, and we've got a lot of sky at the top, which does fade in a really good print from dark to light. Okay, so if I start to sketch this, I'm not going to use the whole piece of paper, but proportionally, I know that I have to have a line, a straight line going across, which represents that horizon line. And I've also got a vanishing point, and it's not quite halfway because I've got this big structure that's halfway. It's actually to the side, so I could almost split my horizon line into quarters okay so I know here I've got a path and it comes out towards me a bit like that if I come to the center of the painting I might need to cheat a little bit and use a, a ruler because I am working on an angle okay I know that I have got a turbine that's going to be pretty high if I look where it features on this blue section, it's about halfway up. I could almost imagine it's central. Okay, so if I think about how big my paper is, I know that I've got a structure that's about there. Okay, I also know that it flares out. Now you can draw this freehand, but I think if, because of the nature of the strength of the pole as a visual source, I think if we can use a ruler to just slightly flare out, it will help when we come to do the painting. Okay, now here we have got a centre part that almost blends in perfectly with that one blade. You could have a little tick back to front there or you could blend it in with this blade. So if you remember what I said, we are looking for something that's going to be, if I think about the space, I'm looking at the shape a bit like a pizza or a piece of cake. I know that my blade is going to be there and I've got to go out the other side a little bit. Okay, and then using my judgment, the space between, so mathematicians amongst you, the space either side is almost equal in this image. So I know there's going to be another blade and I also know it's going to be about the same as length as that pencil there, look. Okay, which then leaves one more blade. And I think if I look at the angle there, it's going to be coming up here somewhere, like so. Now for now, I'm just going to make those slightly darker so you can see them, but I won't, wouldn't want to make them too dark. And the reason why I wouldn't make, want to make them too dark is because I don't want them to show through my painting. 
And you might know, especially if you're very good at identifying uh, wind turbines, that they've got a slight kink on the blades. You might want to just sketch those in if you're freehanding those differences in. I need that little bit there. And there's a little, I do believe there's a bird sat on this wind turbine. I'll check in a second. I'm sure there's a little dark bit there. Okay, that could be a bird. Maybe the person who took the photograph will know. Right, talked about perspective. There is a really lovely example of perspective happening here because the, the wind turbines are also going off in the distance and they change their positions. So we need to plot those. One of them is kind of on this side of the path. Okay, and it doesn't even get halfway up in height. It get, it's sort of a, uh, just before the halfway point. So we can pop him in. Okay, and then we can pop this little one here and that's actually in line with the path. Okay, and we'd be doing some little flicks for those because really to paint those in now wouldn't, wouldn't work. And those two are, are doing that. Okay, oh, don't forget the trees. We've got some trees and some hedge line. We'll pop those in, it actually looks like hills there as well. So we've put those in. The way I see it is just bands of color when we come to paint it. And we've got some nice little textures from daisies that are potentially in that field. Okay, so the picture is now ready for some tone. I did say I was going to do tone with the background for you and then I'll do a time lapse to complete it. Okay, so one way of getting a really nice background tone is to use a chisel brush rather than one of these little round headed brushes because round headed brushes have got a lovely point for the detail. We'll need those to do these blades. But the big brush is great for those backgrounds. So I'm using poster colors and I'm gonna try and wake up the paints because poster colors that are in block form like this are brilliant, but you have to wake them up. They go off to sleep. Okay, so that white's now starting to come alive. Okay, and I've got the perfect blue in this palette. Okay, this blue here, turquoisey blue might maybe it isn't the perfect blue actually i think i'm going to mix some of this blue with it let's just pop those two blues together what do i get oh that's better so i'm going to use this blue in with this blue okay and i'm going to start off with it in its purest form with lovely big brush strokes across the whole of my turbine i'm not making the paint too thick okay but we need to go from dark Slowly down the page, we can use water or we can use the white paint. We need to start going lighter. And don't worry about the fact you've gone over the turbine because we can use either different paint or thicker paint to make that work. Oh, got a bit of orange there. I don't know where that's come from. Okay, nice big sweeping mark. So if I was in the classroom, I'd get my students to stand up and do this. It makes it an awful lot easier. Whereas if you're sat at an angle, it's a bit harder. Right. I think that will do for now. I'm going to a few ripples, so I might have to come back to it when that's dry. Because we haven't stretched our paper because it's an exercise. Right. I'm going to now do a time lapse and fill in all the other bits. And then I'll show you how to do um, the turbine itself with the detail.